स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया today we are going to talk about free groups now this is not uh, a topic that uh, you usually encounter in uh, first course on group theory for example um, but uh, it's nevertheless a very important notion and we'll try to understand it uh, as intuitively as possible initially and then slowly work our way towards the uh, formal definition okay so here's the main uh, motivation so firstly we know what generators of a group mean okay so what is uh, the set of generators of a group so given a set um s so if suppose g is a group so let g be a group and s be any subset of g then we say s generates the whole group g if the following is true if um so what we'll call the smallest subgroup generated by s is all of g okay now what is the subgroup generated by s so let's unravel that uh, little notation there so this is what's called the subgroup generated by the subset s so let's define that so this is just defined to be the smallest subgroup of g which contains the set s so it's defined as follows so here's definition this is just the intersection of h so of all the the elements uh, all the subgroups h so what is h h is a subgroup of g it's a intersection of all subgroups of g which contain the set s itself okay and as is uh, uh, probably familiar to you this is in fact a subgroup so if you define an an arbitrary intersection of subgroups is again a subgroup so this will always be a subgroup so this is always a subgroup of the group g and this subgroup as you can check is lead so this subgroup is what's called the um, subgroup generated by the set s okay so here are some examples so if i take um for example let's say g is the cyclic group g is cyclic group of order n and cyclic group of order n in this case just means uh, the elements of the group look like 1 a a square till a to the n minus 1 so these are the the various elements of this group and uh, what we have is um well if this is your your group g we know that the singleton if i take s to just be the element a itself for example then the subgroup generated by this uh, singleton a is of course the entire group g because once a is in the in the subgroup then so is a square a cubed and so on okay so all of these are are in the subgroup so uh, here it's clear that the subgroup generated by the singleton is the whole group g now let's look for um, another example so here's example 2 let's take the group g to be the set of all integers with addition being the group operation so this as you know is an is an abelian group and here again we can find uh, subsets which generate the whole group for example if i take the subset s consisting of only the the number 1 then uh, clearly the subgroup generated by this group is just the whole group z right because as soon as one belongs to um, you know the subgroup generated by s you know 2 3 4 they all have to belong because they are just obtained by 
repeated additions. Okay. Now, similarly, of course, this by no means is the only uh, set which generates the whole group. You could look at, for example, the singleton uh, consisting of minus 1 that again would generate the group. Uh, Here is another example. I, I could take two elements, for example, the elements 2 and 3. This uh, two element subset also generates a group because two, once 2 and 3 belong, then so does their difference which is 3 minus 2 which is 1 and once you have 1 in a subgroup then of course all elements of z belong to that subgroup okay but observe so these are all all generating subset they all generate the whole group g but uh, here's an example of something which does not generate the group g which is just the singleton 2 this guy does not generate z because the smaller subgroup uh, which contains this set s is just the uh, so, in this case, if you just think about it for a minute, the smallest subgroup of the integers which contains uh, s is just going to be the set of all even numbers. So, this is all even numbers okay, and so that is of course, not equal to the entire uh, uh, group z itself. Okay. Now, the, the next example is very close to the previous one, we could look at z2 which is the set of all um, vectors if you wish. Uh, the typical elements here look like uh, x comma y, this is a typical element of z2 where x and y both belong to integers. So, this is like uh, pictorially you can think of z2 as just being you know just draw the, the usual plane and just mark off the points whose x and y coordinates are both integers. So, for example, these guys. So, what you get sometimes called the integer lattice. So, the origin is also there and so on. So, this collection of points is what is uh, what we could think of as z2 and of course, here these are all vectors in the plane integer coordinate vectors and you have the usual notion of addition which is if I take x1 y1 plus x2 y2 then I just add component wise. So, this forms a group under this operation x1 plus x2 comma y1 plus y2. And the group of uh, you know the group z square has the following obvious uh, set of generators. I could just take the vector 1 comma 0 and the vector 0 comma 1 and again as one can check easily if I take the smallest subgroup of z2 which con contains these two elements then it must contain every other element of, of z2 it must contain all elements. Okay. So, here is again an example of, of uh, a group which is generated by two elements a and b in this case. So, I will just call these, these two elements, I will denote them by uh, as a and b and observe in this case that because this group is abelian, the group z2 is abelian, we actually have something, something further here that these two generators a and b satisfy this relation that a b is actually equal to b in this case. Okay. Okay, so, here is example 4. So, this is what we call the dihedral group again must be a very familiar example for all of you. So, the dihedral group with 8 elements. So, what I will call D4. Okay. So, this has 8 elements this as we are used to thinking about this, this is nothing but the set of all this is the group of symmetries of a square. So, that is the dihedral group and the, the typical symmetry. So, if you imagine the square as being as positioned in this manner. So, this is a square of uh, say some side length let us say side length 2. So, the, these are the 4 vertices 1 comma 1, 1 comma minus 1, this is minus 1 comma minus 1 and this is the point minus 1 comma 1. So, imagine the square here of side length 2 uh, drawn on the plane and we sort of ask what are the, uh, this is the square and what are the symmetries. So, what are the operations of the plane uh, which preserve the square okay? and so the most obvious one is of course, the rotation and there is another one which is reflection about the x axis. So, there are many rotations and we will sort of you know the usual way of writing out this group 
is to say, well, there are elements, the following are elements of the group. I have 1, a, a squared, a cubed. So, what is this, this uh, transformation a, the symmetry a? Let us think of a as being rotation um, about well, rotation uh, through a 90 degree angle, okay? rotation by 90 degrees say anti-clockwise. Okay? And uh, there are four more elements which I will denote b, b a, b a square and b a cubed where b is the transformation which is reflection about the x axis okay? and observe that this again preserves each of them preserves the square and a squared a cubed are just rotation by a 180 degree angle and a 270 degree angle respectively. And again here observe that if I take s my generating subset to just comprise the elements uh, a and b then uh, just because the elements all have this form observe if I look for what is the smallest subgroup of d4 which contains this subset s which contains a and b then there is no other way out it has to also contain every single element of d4. Okay? So, here is a generating set the set uh, two element set a b generates the group d4. Now, uh, again like we, we observed in the earlier case that the generators a and b uh, end up satisfying some relations in this group. Okay? So, earlier I said if I take a and b to be the generators of uh, the group z2 then a b was equal to b a because it was an abelian group and in this case similarly the relations are uh, a power 4 is actually identity. Okay? So, I will denote the identity by 1. So, this is the identity element of the group D4. So, a power 4 is, is just rotation by 360 degrees which is the same as doing nothing. So, that is the identity. Uh, B being a reflection if I do it twice I get back the identity. So, B square is 1 and here is the non-trivial relation which you must have surely seen which is if I take a times B then it is not equal to b times a, but rather b times a inverse, which in this case is, is b times a cubed. Okay? So, here are some relations which are satisfied by these two generators a and b. Okay? And you know, one, one has many examples of, of groups like this with uh, some canonical set of generators and the generators obeying some sorts of relations. So, here is another uh, example which I will leave for you as an exercise. I can take G to be the, the permutation group S n, the set of all permutations of the elements 1 to n and in this case the uh, rather beautiful generating set is the following. You can just take what are called the adjacent transpositions or the elementary transpositions which is you only look at the uh, permutations which uh, permute two adjacent letters to adjacent numbers and do not do anything to any of the other numbers. Okay? So, it is it is an interesting fact that it is these these uh, n minus 1 elements actually generate this entire group this is the whole group S n okay? rather remarkable because there are only n minus 1 of them but the group S n itself is rather large. There are, there are n factorial elements, but it is enough you know you can generate them with just these particular n minus 1 elements. Okay? There are other, other even more economical uh, sets of generators. But again here notice that uh, you know if I call these there are n minus 1 of them. So, I will call them a 1, a 2, a n minus 1. Observe then that I actually have some relations here as well. So, each of them satisfies the following relation a i square is 1 um, and uh, for all i and there are other sorts of relations. So, there are many others. So, if I take a product of two of these guys, if I take a 1 a 2, then it is the product of two uh, simple transpositions 1 2 and 2 3 and that turns out to be the, the 3 cycle 1 2 3 and therefore, its cube is actually the identity okay? and there are many other such relations okay, which I will, I will leave for now. So, so uh, an, an exercise for you in some sense is to try and figure out what are all the relations that hold among the AIs. 
Okay, now intuitively, um, when you have a group that is generated by some collection of generators, so in many of our earlier examples, there were let's say two generators A and B, the, the group was generated by them, but there were nevertheless some relations, meaning some equations between the generators of the form, you know, either A square or some power of A's identity or some multiple of A and B um, in some order turns out to be the same as some other product of A and B, you know, with some powers, some other order and so on, right. So, things like A B equals B cubed A in the dihedral group is an example of a relation, okay. Now, uh, what we want to do now when we talk about free groups okay so let me sort of explain this try to do all of this uh, the free group on just two generators okay so in general i have a notion of what's called the free group generated by a set s okay so this is the general notion given any set s we can talk about the free group generated by that set s but let us illustrate everything for the special case when the set only has two elements A and B. Okay. So, we will try and explain, I, I will try and explain what the free group on two uh, generators looks like. Okay. So, this set sometimes is called the, the alphabet or the set of generators. Okay. So, you should think of these as, as some formal symbols. So, A and B now are just some alphabets in some sense. So, they are just some formal symbols. Okay. So, I am just given two symbols A and B. Okay. And what I want to do is to try and generate a group from these two guys. So, this is called the free group. So, I will denote it like this f of s. So, what is this, this f of s supposed to be? Well, firstly, this should be a group. So, what, what are the properties that I want? Um, for f of s, number 1, this should be a group of course. It should contain these two generators a and b uh, should be in f of s, but of course, uh, even more I want a and b to generate the whole group. So, these two elements a and b, the subgroup of f s generated by them is in fact the whole group f s. In other words, the set s generates the whole group, but so we have already seen many instances of where this property holds that I have a say a couple of elements in the group which generates the group, but uh, here is where the, the, the new thing happens. So, this is the what it means for a group to be free. So, here is the freeness. So, I want, so here is a third property which I want my group to satisfy that there should be no relations between A and B. Okay? There should be no relations. Now, whatever that means between A and B. So, all the examples that we have looked at already are uh, not examples of free groups because I had generators no doubt, but those generators always satisfied some relations in the group. Okay? Now, uh, at the moment I am still talking a little loosely, little intuitively. So, we will we'll get to the precise definition later. Okay? but broadly this is the idea. So, let us talk about a candidate. So, I said I want to construct a group like this. So, there is sort of a natural candidate for this group. So, let me talk about that. So, I can actually talk about a candidate for for this free group f of s. So, again remember I am only going to do everything for the case when the set has these two elements a and b. So, what is the you know what all can I definitely conclude about my group f of s right. I said it must have these two elements a and b and it must be generated by them. Now, what I want to do is to try and see what elements must definitely belong to the group right. What can I say about the elements that are definitely there. So, here are some elements which I can I can surely say are there in the group. Uh, the element A must surely be in the group and so must the element B. So, these are both of course the generators. So, they both belong to the group certainly. Okay. Now, uh, because A and B are both there, I know that A A or A square if you multiply A with itself 
the element which I will write as a a must be there if I multiply b with itself an element b square or b b must be there the element a b must be there and of course I am not assuming my group is abelian or anything. So, a b and b a are both um, in general different elements and I want both of them of course must belong to my group. Okay, so, I managed to, to figure out some more elements. So, let us write these out. Uh, now, I can start looking at products of three things at a time. So, for example, I can look at the element a cubed which is a a a and look at a a b can look at a b a can look at b a a uh, a b b b a b b b a and b b b. So, these are all in some sense products of elements 3 at a time and you can imagine this goes on I can look at products of things 4 at a time 4 a's 3 a's 1 b etc etc ok. So, these are all words of length 4 in some sense then I look at words of length 5 words of length 6 and so on ok. Now, uh, so what have I what have I done well at the moment remember I said a and b are just two formal letters right they are like an alphabet they are just two formal symbols and what I am trying to do here really is to write down words using these two as my alphabet ok. So, let us look at all the words which you can form with a and b as your uh, alphabet and in some sense what I have done here is really write down those words. So, here for example, these are these two are the words of length 1, these are the words with have which have two letters in them, here are the words with length of length 3 here are the words of length 4, length 5, length 6 and so on ok. So, given two elements a and b formal symbols well one thing I seem to be able to do is to construct this set of all words in this alphabet ok and the set of all words. So, this is the set of all words in these two letters a and b ok. So, look at this this set of all words. Now, what all do I know about this? Firstly, remember it is an infinite set. So, one thing I surely know is that is that this is an infinite set ok. Uh, but here is the question can this be made into a group? Is this maybe a, a, a reasonable candidate for the free group itself? Here is a here is a list of all words. So, I that is that is going to be the attempt we will try and make this into a group, but in order to do this we remember we need to be able to define a multiplication operation. So, I need a multiplication. So, the question is what is the multiplication operation on words? I need to look for the multiplication operation on words and there is one obvious operation. So, if I have a word w1 and a word w2, so, let me define their product. So, maybe we will put a star for the product w 1 star w 2 is the following this is what is called the concatenation of words. So, this is the concatenation of the two words w 1 w 2 ok. Now, what does concatenation mean? It just means you first write the word w 1 then write w 2. in that order. So, whatever comes first comes first. So, for example, if w 1 is the word a b a and I want to figure out what I get when I multiply it by the word b b a a then the concatenation operation is just the following just write them all out one after the other a b a b b a a ok. I notice that this concatenation operation is not commutative because if I write uh, these in the opposite order then of course, the answer is going to be you know I have b b a a star a b a. So, I first write b b a a and then follow it up by follow it up with a b a ok. So, this is uh, this is the definition of uh, an operation. Now, it is not commutative as as we just observed here, but 
uh, what is interesting is that this is actually an associative operation. Okay. So, that is the that is the next thing we will we'll talk about. So, observe this was not commutative. So, that was the observation. So, this is not a commutative operation. Okay. But it is associative. Okay. So, let us see why is this why is this associative? Um, the reason is rather straightforward. This is how we are associative because if I take three words which is what associativity involves, I need to take three words w1, w2 and w3. So, if I first concatenate words w1 and 2 and then concatenate it with the word w3, then what is this? This is just going to be one long word which is obtained by first write w1 then write w2 then write w3 right so it's just going to be these these three guys uh, written out one after the other and if you did the same thing in the other order which is i first multiply w2 and w3 and then multiply the answer on the left by w1 then well as you can see the answer is quite the same thing because you would have written w2 and 3 first uh, concatenated them together and then followed it up by concatenating w1 on the left okay so these are these are actually the the same answer so even though um, this operation of concatenation is not a commutative operation it certainly is associated okay so that's that's already uh, uh, rather promising now let's ask ourselves what about the the other uh, properties is this uh, a group with respect to this operation now for it to be a group we also need identity and inverse right so let's check whether this group has an identity element so recall what is an identity element so let's call it id does does there exist an identity element it is an element which satisfies the following property it should be a special word which when i concatenate with any word w gives me back w and this should also equal w concatenated with the special word id and this should hold for all words w right now observe uh, what word can possibly have this this property so w for example is already some word right so w already has some some alphabets you know a's or b's and i'm saying i take this this word w and i concatenate it with this this special word id and when i look at this concatenation the answer is just whatever was there in w already right and to get this there is really just one way this word id must have no alphabets whatsoever right so this says actually the following that this word id must be what we will call the empty word okay so this is the empty word in uh, in in the alphabet a b so what does that mean it has no a's or b's has no a's or b's another way of saying it is that its length is zero the length of the word is 0 or um, another thing we could say is uh, well uh, maybe not another thing but another notation for the for the empty word is the following so we'll just put this this little uh, placeholder here to say with with nothing in it to say that you know there are no letters so here's a notation for the empty word so this is notation for the empty word Okay, so uh, we have managed to get uh, the set of all words has these two properties associativity and identity and uh, let us just check the last axiom which is inverse, the existence of an inverse. Now what does the existence of an inverse mean? Uh, given any element, any word w, I should be able to find another word. Okay, which we will call w inverse such that w multiplied by w inverse should give me the, the identity element. Right? This is what existence of inverse would mean. 
Now observe in this case the identity element as we, we just observed must just be the empty word. Okay, so that is the notation. So what am I asking for here? I want this element w to be concatenated with some word suitably suitable word such that the, the, the overall concatenation just turns out to be empty. Right? So, I mean as should be clear this thing can only be done if w is already empty other than for the empty word w you are never going to be able to do this. right? So, if w is empty we can do this of course. right? Observe if w is the empty word then ok then uh, w concatenated can we find a, 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 an inverse well the empty word concatenated with the empty word is of course the empty word right? because there are no letters whatsoever. But for any non-empty word if w is anything other than the identity then w already has some letters and there is just no way you can concatenate it with anything and ensure that the answer has no letters in it. Okay? So, this basically cannot be done uh, for the, the words whose length is uh, one or more. So, uh, that is sort of bad news in some sense that uh, inverses do not exist. Okay. So, this inverses do not exist. So, uh, what we have here the set of all words with the concatenation operation has the identity and the associativity properties, but it fails to have the inverse property. Okay. So, uh, we have already made a start. So, this is a, 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 a good beginning. But we are sort of not quite where we want to be. We have not managed to construct a, a group starting with, with A and B. Okay? And this is something that we will take up in the next lecture.